In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the things that you wanna keep an eye out for. And this is the place where maybe you've recognized some of these patterns and these habits within yourself that you have a tendency toward an experience of anxiety or worry or self-criticism, but you are fully engaged in your work, in your family, and you don't feel like you are at that point of either burnout or of avoidance, because that's one of the things that we'll notice when anxiety builds, we might start to have patterns of avoiding things that can create an experience of anxiety within us. So that's one of the things that we're keeping an eye out for. If your patterns of worry and fear and rumination start to become more frequent, um, they might have a stronger physiological impact on you. You feel more of those physical symptoms coming to the surface um, and that's becoming a more frequent experience in your life. Those are the times when it is a thing that you want to make sure that you talk about with your doctor, but more specifically, making sure that you have a therapist who is trained in working with somebody who has anxiety. Um, I always recommend working on any problem, no matter what it is, from multiple different angles. That's when we have the best outcome. That's when we have the most support along that path. So having your doctor on the same page, having a talk therapist that you see like a social worker or a psychologist, helping you to work through some of your deeper internal patterns, maybe working with a yoga therapist who can teach you incredibly valuable self-regulation practices and ways to work on a stronger relationship with yourself through a set of self-care practices. All of these things can come together to create a really helpful team. But especially when you start to notice a ramping up of your symptoms, it is incredibly important that you make it known because when you're starting from that place of high functioning anxiety, where you have this outward appearance of being someone who does not have anxiety, you might want to hold on to that as a secret. Sometimes there's a little bit of shame, embarrassment, um, that goes along with that. And because other people can't necessarily tell that you have anxiety, you might wanna be keeping that to yourself because you don't want them to think differently about you, right? These are the things that we think about. But it is so important for us to express when we need help, especially coming to a professional and saying, hey, I'm noticing that my patterns of worry and fear are getting stronger and they're really starting to affect my life, to affect my internal enjoyment, and I think I need some guidance in this area of my life. That is exactly the time that you need to seek the support of a professional. And this is a conversation that I've had with so many patients over the years, and I know that people have varying levels of comfort with the experience of going to a talk therapist, going to a psychologist or a social worker. And I have a couple tips for you in this process. The first thing is just understanding that everyone's family, your system that you grew up in, might have had some firmly held beliefs about whether or not it was good to see a therapist. I know many families where it is frowned upon, where the very strong information that you may have gotten growing up was that problems stay inside the family. You do not talk about them. You do not share them with anybody, even if it is a professional. And that is a very old school way of thinking, of protecting your problems so that nobody knows that you are struggling, right? And we know that that pattern will very often increase our suffering, increase our struggle because we're not reaching out for help. And as humans, we are really made to live in a system where we have multiple connections, where we have 
multiple avenues of support around us. I'm going to create this new pattern. You know, a lot of people like to talk about cycle breakers. If you yourself are saying, hey, I recognize the fact that things inside are getting a little bit out of control and I need somebody to help me sort this out. So I'm going to see somebody who has literally dedicated their life to helping people with their internal processes. What a wonderful thing. They have a whole set of tools and a whole set of expertise to help you with that. Um, that is a wonderful thing. And you can show that to other people that by you saying, hey, I need to go get help from somebody who's professionally trained to support me through this. Everybody else in your life that you choose to share that with, it takes away the stigma for them. And I like to think of it like if you're having trouble reaching out yourself, kind of switch this around. So this is one of the um, meditation practices that we will do. If you're having trouble giving yourself advice in a certain situation, you take your consciousness out and you think, okay, if I was talking to a friend, if I was talking to another person and they had this exact same challenge, what would I tell them? What would I encourage them to do? And then you bring that back into yourself and you say, okay, you know, sometimes we need a little bit of separation from that experience. And that's the moment when you're like, okay, I need to get out of my own way and recognize that I can pick up the phone and find somebody who's going to help support me through this. The other piece of advice that I have for you as someone who has talked to a lot of different people who are looking for a therapist is that sometimes the first person that you talk to, you might not mesh. And I encourage you to maybe give it a couple visits and kind of get to know this person that you're going to be spending some therapy sessions with to see if you can have an open relationship where you can really tell them things that feel vulnerable, that feel uncomfortable. You have to have a certain level of comfort with them and a certain type of connection with them. And it can be kind of personal. So I've gone to different therapists and, you know, I've sat there and tried to explain the things that I was experiencing at that time. And by the end of the session, I kind of knew that they weren't my therapist and that's okay because you're looking for a very specific person. I'll give you an example. Um, one of the times when I was seeing a therapist was when I was going through a divorce and had a lot of, you know, relationship things and like anger and resentment that I was working through. And one of the therapists that I tried to go see was a specialist in couples and infertility and had pictures of babies all over their office. And I sat in there for that session and I was like, mm, yeah, this is not, this is not where I am at in my life right now. And this person has a great set of skills that can be super helpful for somebody who's struggling through infertility and needs help with that. That's a great subset, a great specialty. Um, but I needed something different at that time. So I decided that they were not somebody I was going to see again. And I tried another therapist. So sometimes you might have to see three or four or five until you find somebody that you're like, okay, this is my person. I feel like I can really talk to them openly and they have the skill set that I need to help me work on my personal challenges right now. So I hope that this gives you a little more information on what to keep an eye on in the broader scope of living with the experience of high functioning anxiety and how not just yoga, right? Because therapy and all of these other professions are all a piece of the puzzle that's going to help us to get to the place that we want to be in. So it takes a team. All right, I will see you in the next one.